Okay, hi guys. So today I'm back for a recent read and as you can probably tell, woo, that's a lot of books. <laughs> and actually it's not all the books that I've read. There are two I think that are missing because I read them on my computer. But anyway, they were theses, so maybe not very interesting for you. I don't know. So we'll start with um, the book that we were reading in my book club this month. By the way, if you are not part of my book club, you should. The book that we read this month was recommended by a friend of mine, and it's called The Thing Around Your Neck. And it was written by Shimamanda Ngozi Adichie, who is a Nigerian author. I'm very ashamed to say that, but I'm very ignorant when it comes to African literature. So if you want to educate me on that, feel free to do so in the comments below. So it is a collection of short stories which are focusing on a female protagonist, or at least um, female struggles and female experiences. Um, the characters are Nigerian, from Nigeria, 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 Nigeria perhaps, I don't know, and um, most of the themes are, you know, sexuality, romance, and family uh, focused, I would say. What I really liked was, uh, it was a very foreign territory for me. I also like the fact that there is a variety of um, stories and the one thing that I liked a lot is that I thought that most of the stories were very interesting and original and unusual but also I found it a bit repetitive at times perhaps just the fact that it's always about a female protagonist and it's sort of always around the same central and crucial important themes or perhaps it was the writing style I don't know there was something in some stories not all the time and not to the point that it was annoying or disturbing um, that made me feel like it was a bit repetitive. I would definitely recommend that book. Um, it was a great surprise, a good discovery, so yeah, and it's well written. You know, usually I'm like, you, everything that's contemporary um, it doesn't do it for me usually, but this one I thought was quite well written. Enough of that book. Then I read The Modern Fable by Nishiwaki Junzaburo, and that's a collection of surrealist poems. So, and um, basically, you know that I'm writing my, maybe you know, I don't know, I'm writing my dissertation on surrealism, let's say like that, simple and very, very simplified way of putting it, but that's, that's it. And I'm focusing on Japanese, Egyptian and French surrealism, and that's the main book that I'm going to study when it comes to Japanese surrealism. So it is a, obviously, translation to English. Um, yeah, that's poetry. Honestly, poetry is not my favorite thing in the world, especially when it really is poetry, you know. Uh, I like prose poetry, but this one, I mean, even though it is quite uh, modern, it is obviously very modern, it's surrealist, but it's still not prose, and for me, it just kind of... It was my first kind of experience with Japanese surrealist poetry, um, and... I don't know, maybe because it's a translation and maybe because it's in English and maybe because poetry is not my favorite thing. Um, it wasn't as good, in my opinion, as French surrealist poetry, but maybe it's also because I can't really fully connect with it. But yeah, it's very interesting from maybe more like an analysis and study sort of perspective because it's very modern, it creates new ways to write, it's uh, very innovative when it comes to the language. So yeah, and the themes, and it's a good way to you know think about the different exchanges between cultures and literatures and transculturation and that kind of stuff. Then I read Le Prophète by Khalil Gibran, 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 I think Gibran. Um, so I've been recommended this book a billion times for so long, and um, okay, I did not dislike it. I don't regret buying it and reading it, reading it, but. I'm honestly not a big fan. It's like how everyone, or almost everyone, seems to really enjoy... What's his name? Coelho, I think? And I'm like, no, I don't like it at all. I find it very boring. This book is, is like a billion times better. It's beautiful and poetic at times, but it really isn't my thing. It really isn't my cup of tea. Okay, then I read uh, mostly Japanese. <laughs> so, 
I read one uh, short story or one novella, I would say, by Kenzaburo Oe. I liked it. It was disturbing, it was disgusting at times, but it was great. It's the story of a black soldier in that during the Second World War lands by accident in a very rural area of Japan and is kept as a hostage by a Japanese village and that's basically the story of that. It's not a pleasant read, let's put it that way. It's not a pleasant read because honestly even though you know that the author wrote it to make us think and to criticize how stupid human beings can be to be racist. And it's still very unsettling and very disturbing to see how they treat and how they consider the black man. Uh, Ken Zaburo Oe is a very famous writer and he has written a lot of amazing things. It's perhaps not the best but it was cheap and it was small so I picked it up. I read uh, Le Coupeur de Roseau by Junichiro Tanizaki who is very very amazingly famous. I did like the story. The storyline and the plot are very interesting. It's about a man who's in love with someone, a girl, but he ends up marrying the sister and it's all about the relationship that they have, the three of them. And the way it's told, like the narrative construction is interesting as well because it's not directly told to us. It's the son of the man that tells that to someone that we follow at first, that we follow at first so we think he's the protagonist but he's actually not. Um, it's very eerie and mystical and stuff, so that was a good read. I read Rêve de Convalescence by Nagib Marfou, so this one would be translated Dreams and Dreams of Departure, I think in English. It's a collection of dreams, uh, so it's very short, it's usually like one or two pages for each dream. Uh, they're very short, they're very simple, they're not like the writing and the narrative construction aren't really... Um, what would I say, um, to embellished or worked on that much, I think to really convey like the sensation and the, you know, the impression of a dream, even though it's very short, even though there's no like, you know, it, it's, it's a dream, sometimes it doesn't make sense and sometimes it's very boring and like banal and there's nothing going on, um, but most of the dreams really do talk about Egypt, about Carol, Carol, the Ca Le Caire? Anyway, Cairo? Cairo? Cairo. Cairo. Nagi Mahfouz, whom I'm gonna talk about probably in a video, is a very famous Egyptian writer who got the Nobel Prize and he wrote extensively, like I don't remember exactly, but I think over 70 novels or 40 novels and 70 short stories, which is a lot. And he was a realist. He wrote about, you know, the daily life of people in Egypt and the struggles that they faced and he was a very... Um, a critical thinker and critical writer and so he was actually stabbed by a Muslim extremist. You can really sense the the nostalgia and also the very still you know sharp eye of someone who sees and even though he was blind at the end of his life but you know feels and analyzes and knows his country and the politics and the sociology so it is a great read i liked it a lot another egyptian writer uh nawal el sarawi so it is woman woman at point zero i loved freaking loved this book it, it was really amazing so that also made me really happy because it's a more contemporary book and I found it really nice, even though it's a translation and it's contemporary, I still enjoyed it. And Nawal El-Sadawi is... Um, is she dead? I don't think she's dead. Uh, she was a psychiatrist and um, she had a lot of issues with the Egyptian authorities because she was obviously criticizing a lot of stuff and she was a woman and whatnot. Um, she was censored, you know, that kind of stuff. But, she wrote about women rights, women issues, women situation in Egypt uh, and this story is her meeting a woman who is in prison is going to be um, executed the next morning I think because she committed a murder and it's basically the story of that woman and how she got to you know 
become a murderer and be in prison. It's very heartbreaking and it's very harsh and um, difficult to read when you know that it's the truth for many women in Egypt. It's compelling and you want to keep on reading it and it's important because you have to understand what's going on there and you have to know and you have to inform yourself and you just have to support a woman who took the risk to write all these books. And three books, three Japanese books. Two books by Edogawa Rampo. I read The Red chamber or the red room and the blind beast I'd say I suppose I translated this way in English so Edogawa Rampo sorry is a bit of an old writer I think it was the beginning of the 20th century and he basically was like the one that introduced um, uh, what would I say detective or thriller novels in Japan his work is very disturbing I talked about it already in my last recent reads because I already read something by him and um, it's very disturbing very sensual and sexual a lot about you know how human beings can be perverted and how they can be cruel and how they can be like just wrong but also how they can make it like almost like an art you know like it's very interesting to see the parallel between how his work is very, um, the style is very rich, very thought through, very worked on. You can sense that he really wanted it to be aesthetic and pleasing and beautiful. And you see, you see the same sort of dedication and work and attention to details when it comes to the murderers and the rapists and the whatever that are committing murders and crimes in his books. Personally, I really I really enjoy reading that, so I'm gonna keep buying books by him. And last but not least, I read, I think it's called Tale of a Woman or Tale of My Mother by Yasushi Inoue. It's the last years of a woman who is becoming senile and completely forgets everything and loses her mind and so her children are taking care of her and kind of like reflecting on the years that she had before, how she was when she was young, the relationship with her father, why she forgets certain things and not other things. It is a great read, it's a beautiful book, it's very moving and warm and yeah, that's all I have to say really. So that's all for this month. I think I read quite a bit um, and I hope you enjoyed watching this video guys. Let me know what you've been reading. Don't forget to check out the book club and I shall see you later. Bye!